Welcome to Crypto Clones Line. We're glad to be here with you. Hanging out the crypto laundry. Getting all the crypto info for you. Crypto Clones Welcome to Crypto Close Line. Hello, Amy Rose. Hello. How are you going? I'm pretty good. I made myself some chai this morning, like hardcore real deal chai. It's really yummy. Did you do that like a comfort thing? I did. I got a bit poopy last night when I was at this event, which I'm not going to talk about now because it'll get me all worked up. I just decided that this morning it was so cold and I just went, let's just make some real chives. We got out the cinnamon and we got out the ginger and the black pepper and the cardamom and crushed the seeds and it's really good. Just saying. That is so funny because I don't know, you might have heard me in our pre-chat to what we're going to be talking about today, but I was munching away. Very rude. But I've set up a cheese platter for myself and a cotton towel, which is like what my seven-year-old daughter calls cocktails because she can't say cocktails. <laughs> so she calls them cottontails. I'm actually being all posh because I'm flying out tomorrow and this is like my getting everything ready, not stressing about packing, you know, because you just by default stress out or I don't know, your brain goes into overdrive. Yeah, I think it's called there's just too much for one human being to do, but you do it anyway. <laughs> That's right. So anyway, cheese platter, cotton tail, and chilling, and you, you're with your chai. So we're totally on the same page today. How cool is that? Well, you know, in some circles, they call it self-comforting. <laughs> well, you know, our interview today is, is with the guys from Refueler. And when we interviewed them live at Block Conscious, we did have a few left of center comments. So, you know, hey, it's just part of what the expected conversation and it was live at the time. And yeah, that's what happens when you do a group interview at a live event. You cannot mute some things. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hence, I, I quietly took it down off the Facebook page, but never mind. We would love to welcome you to Crypto Clothesline. Our show is about helping women join the blockchain wealth revolution for themselves and their families. Our names are Amy Rose Goody and Abedith Catherine Pass, and we're speakers in blockchain and crypto, and we are on this mission. We're learning together with you. We're talking with leading experts in the space, exploring cutting-edge technology projects that are shaping the future for our children. This podcast is for intelligence and growth, and our values are for peace, harmony, and collaboration for the planet. The guys we're talking to today, as we mentioned before, are these wonderful, lovely couple of fellas that we met at Block Conscious. And it took us a while to get them up on the couches because we were interviewing so many people. I'm so glad that we actually made it happen in the end. Me too. I love those guys. And they thought that I was funny and they laughed at all my jokes. So they must be watching a lot of these entrepreneurial how-to-be videos because... They actually got me to like them a lot. So if you laugh at people's jokes, they'll be your best friend. <laughs> You've got so many great hints for how to, you know, it's like you should rewrite the book, do the millennial version of how to win friends and influence people. Because speaking of which, how many millennials don't rock up when you've got appointments with them, when you make times to do things with people? What is going on, Amy Rose? It's not even just millennials. I actually feel millennials are getting a hard time because there's some that are doing amazing things and there's generations of selfish people like since day dot. So I don't know. They do have an element of selfishness, perhaps a little bit more, but mostly the whole world has got some sorting out to do. I don't know whether it's selfishness so much as self-responsibility. I don't know that they're selfish. I mean, look at people like Vitalik and they're, they're doing amazing things for the planet. And, you know, a 23-year-old, I'm sure he must be older than that because I've been calling him 23 for ages now. But he's a classic example of somebody, you know, with this sort of uber brain that's really rethinking the system from a coding level up. I mean, I don't really know the ins and outs of it all, but there are some amazing millennials giving incredible gifts, but I feel like it's more about, and it could be a generic thing for sure, but about self-responsibility. It's not that millennials are meanies or anything, but when you go, oh, we were supposed to meet two hours ago and they go, oh, they don't even go, sorry, they don't even bother with that bit. They just go, oh, you know, I had something really important to do. And you're like, Okay. 
Mm. By the way, did you want to get together? And I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's something good that is coming out of the next generations and that is technology. They're born with this default ability to navigate technology. Like my son and my daughter and your kids, they just know how to get things to work. Like we, we used to with our parents in the remote control, you know. <laughs> my son this morning, both of us were up really early and he said, why didn't you play Skate 3 with me on the Xbox last night? And I went, well, because I was writing a blog. And I looked at him and went, do you want to play some now? Which is rare. Like we would never turn that device on before 5 p.m. sort of thing. Anyway, so we're on there. And he said, okay, mum, I'm going to take you into skate school. He goes, I really wish I could play this with you as if you were good at it. <laughs> And I'm like, you know that there's no chance I'll ever be good at it because I've got no interest in it, but I'm doing it for you. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, so I sat there and suffered through 10 minutes, a whole 10 minutes of Skate 3. I hate it when you see the skaters fall off their boards. So my son purposely makes his boy fall off the board. So I have to watch injurious, you know, experiences. <laughs> I must be too empathic, you know, like, oh, I'm cringing and it's only an image on the screen. Oh, I feel your pain. We do a lot of things for our family that we sacrifice as a beauty. And you know what? That brings me back to the refuel interview today because they've actually brought out something that makes family trips a little bit more bearable and spending time with family and not driving around trying to find cheap fuel, which is what I have to do. And I talk about that in the interview. It's just a painful <laughs> experience with my partner hunting down, God, Damn it, three cents off fuel. I don't care. But anyway, Refuel has sorted that out. <laughs> well, let's have a listen to the interview. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you so much for joining us for uh, the adults only version of the Life where we're going to talk about refueling. Oh, the same thing. Uh, with the petrol in your car or diesel. Okay, so we have Louise over here and Jim from Refueler, and we're going to talk about their project and how it works. First of all, uh, yeah, thanks for having us on. I really appreciate it and hearing a lot about what you're actually doing in the space as well. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Pretty good. And good to be in Brisbane and at Block Conscious. Because these are the Adelaideans. Adelaideans, yeah, we're from <laughs> down south. So, but really good to be in Brisbane. It's been called the crypto capital of Australia. So, yeah, happy to be here. Refueler, we've been flying under the radar for a while now, but it's time to come out. We have an MVP being launched in this month. Um, and basically, big problem in Australia um, and globally, but, but let's focus on Australia for now, is fluctuating fuel prices and fuel cycles. Everyone's trying to save money on fuel. There's so many apps and companies and discounts and all sorts of things to get full cents of the litre. The price cycles are around 30 cents at the moment. So, the low point will be $1.29 and, and the high point $1.59 per litre of fuel. Oh. So it's quite a big jump. And when it jumps, it jumps up normally within two or three days from, from the lowest to the highest. And it normally takes a week or two to come back down to that lower point. Oh. So you'll be able to pre-purchase your fuel while they're in those low cycles. Wow. So instead of saving four cents of a litre, you know, four cents of a litre sounds good, but when you put it in perspective, a 50 litre tank, you're going to save $2. You know, it's not a huge saving, especially if you drive out your way to do that. Mm. So what we'll be offering is, you know, potential savings of up to 30 cents a litre. That's a real discount. So the problem is now you might not be able to get to a service station while it's at these prices, like I said, because they go up so quick. Or you get people like me that wait that they're completely empty before they go, oh my God, I've got to find some. Yeah. yeah that's it's really cool. Very fun. Okay. Yeah. And even if there's a, a server that's doing a cheap price, you, you have a huge line of you know, 50 cars in front of you yeah. to fill up. So you're investing in one hour filling up. That one hour, it could be $25 or $50 or $100. Well, it's your precious time. Yeah. It's one commodity that That's, we're all yeah. And screaming kids in the back. Yeah. All you know, you're screaming. Screaming. <laughs> screaming. I hate going Quite. to server. <laughs> and you guys get squeezes. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll ask it. for it. She sent me a photograph recently. She was going to pick something up with great urgency, and then she just went, mm, and it was a photo of her son who basically repainted the back of the car yeah, that's with yogurt. yogurt. And I hate going it's to the fun. servo. It is like, so yeah. That, yeah, yeah, and the servo is definitely not my favourite <laughs> place, but if I know that I'm saving money, no, I'll be able to ahead and pay. Yeah. So yeah. Can you explain how it actually works, though? Because it sounds difficult to use pre purchase Yeah, so, and that's the whole thing. We're trying not to make it difficult, so... Mm. The refueler won't just, you don't have to like log in and look all the time. So we'll have updates, we'll have AI, 
we've got a lot of information that we can base it on. And because of the live fuel pricing that the governments are bringing in around Australia, mandatory yeah. fuel pricing. Okay, that's so, cool. Yeah, and so what we found is, is the independents tend to keep their fuel prices at the low point for a few more days so they can attract more walking customers and customers. Right. Yeah, so walk into going go into store. So what we do is is we'll, our, our system will notice that it will start alerting you that hey guys prices are starting to go up. I suggest you buy a couple of tanks of fuel now to get you through the next few weeks. Oh, but does so that mean like if you, if you're on a family budget, mm. that this is what maybe becomes a more. Mm. Um, family budget, you're like, are you kidding me? Sometimes I'm struggling to pay for one lot of fuel, let alone three or four tanks or two or three. Yeah, of course. So yeah. how does that work? How do I do that? Can and you buy? Can easy? you buy ten dollars worth of fuel, basically? How do you make it easy for me? That's your your avatar. Yeah, so you, you can buy ten dollars worth of fuel. You don't have to buy your own. Uh, yeah, right. so so two cars can have two different cars can have two tanks of fuel, and that you would spend anyway in a week for money and you. You would be paying ten dollars extra for that. Okay. So what we are trying to do here is save you ten ten dollars uh, on the fuel tank. So future savings. Yeah, future savings. Yeah. yeah. So you'll actually be able to budget better because you'll know what's coming up. You'll know what you can spend on your fuel, and you better price that better. Instead of an unexpected fuel bill, you budgeted fifty bucks for fuel for the week, but the price just jumped on you, and all of a sudden that tank's going to cost you sixty-five or seventy dollars. Yes. And that, that's the rule. Yeah. And with the budget, um, that's another real benefit of the. App is that we've got partner rewards, mm -hmm. so you will be able to save uh, earn fuel droplets by uh, shopping through them. And they are, you know, like normal places like uh, you want to book the flight or. Uh, you were telling else. me that yesterday. Yeah. So say yeah. you partner up with Aldi, yeah. I go yeah. shopping at Aldi. Yeah. And I get my fuel cheaper through you because I'm mates yeah. with Aldi as well. Yeah, yeah. and the yeah. best thing is you're not tied to one survey. So by earning your fuel credits at all our shopping partners, you have like you get to use those credits at any survey. So yeah. it doesn't have to be one that's you know the one not be so close to, but you get to use your, your closest survey to be able to do that. So hypothetically, you could actually earn a free tank of fuel if you shop in all the right places through the week. <laughs> uh, does that sound, that sounds too good to be true. Not it, catch, does, but, yeah. it does. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. It doesn't have to be on the blockchain though, because it sounds like you could just get a with software to do all that. Of course you can. Yeah, definitely. So, and we're quite aware of that. And obviously, they're, they're the first questions that everyone that comes straight to mind is why blockchain, and, and that's probably a big question in the whole space as well. So the immediate answer is no, and our immediate response is we're not. It, it won't be on the blockchain straight away. But we will be putting on the blockchain, and it'll probably be most likely a private chain. Mm. The reason for that is because we're going to be doing peer-to-peer -peer trading as well. So we need to build a trust layer in, into this and so security. So I can sell her my fuel. Uh, correct. Yeah. So you might accidentally bought a couple of tanks of fuel, and, and you're heading overseas for a few months. Fuel ledger. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, how about how many times have your kids asked you to fill the tank up of fuel, and you give them twenty bucks for? Do they really put petrol in? Because they ask for petrol well, the next day as well, you know. So only six and eight, but I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so here we. My daughter's yeah. here when I get out. So you can transfer your droplets to it. Can you tell us about droplets? So droplet is uh, one liter of fuel is a uh, droplet. And is that a token? Yeah, so that's a token. Mm. Right. Okay. Yeah, so you can transfer it to your kids. You can transfer it to. For employee, they can transfer it. Um, uh, employer, they can transfer it to their employees. So like a fringe yeah. benefit. Yeah. Oh. And uh, fleet for fleets, it's a really good use case as well, because uh, wow. some of the fleet users they, uh, they use uh, motor charge and the fees are so high. Right. They can just use. Uh, they don't have to carry ten different cards, you know, for uh, Shell, for BP, for the issues that they have. And, in the fuel. I, I mean, I can see this being potentially huge because huge. everyone relies on fuel. And I asked you yesterday when we met, you've been telling me there's no one else doing this. Correct. There is a similar... Um, Careful. Now the word's out. <laughs> <laughs> so there's obviously plenty of fuel apps which show you the problems. You know, yeah. And you can browse around, but they all rely on, except for New South Wales and WA now, all of them rely on uh, user input, mm -hmm. so they're not very accurate and, and they're not updated all the time. I, can, I can speak to that because yeah. my partner is, and I was telling these guys this, it's really frustrating and I hope my partner's watching right now because <laughs> I'm going to share this publicly with the world how irritating this actually is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a crap about, no offence, saving four cents. I'll give a crap about saving 30. I don't want to drive 10 minutes so I can save four cents. So but you do give a crap about spending family time together, right? I don't mind trapping my family in the car like when it's all of us. No, together. what I'm thinking of Daniel, sorry. I'm thinking of your partner going, I, I'm just going to dive out and get some fuel because he just got a message saying it was like on a Sunday.
one day I have to do. Well, actually, this is how it goes. We go driving, like, I need to fill up the tank. And he goes, no, no, no. Before you do that, I need to look at my app so I can tell you where to drive, which is usually freaking ages away, <laughs> to get fuel. And I'm like, well, this is going to save me how much? And he's like, I don't know, maybe two, $2 or something. I'm like, I don't care about $2. I just want to go to the servo and get, you Well, you're spending $5 to find the bloody servo. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm losing yeah. like life because I'm so stressed and annoyed that there goes two days of my life just to listening to whinging about this stuff. Anyway, but I would drive out of my way to say 30 cents a litre. But anyway, so there are apps out there and they're, and they're not updated. So sometimes we go to get some fuel from an app, you know, we've seen the price on that and we get there. That price was put in there days and days ago. And it's not even a reality. So we drive all this way to get this cheap fuel and it doesn't even exist. So two questions. Do the fuel merchants, I'm calling them service stations, but the, yep. the retailers, the point of sale, yep. can I go anywhere with those tokens or do they have to be participating? They have to be on our platform. Okay. Yeah, how many, how many merchants do you have? Uh, at the moment, we have 300. Whoa, that's yeah. pretty cool. All yeah. in the Atlanta area or Australia wide? No, Australia wide. Um, Fremont? Yeah. Any of Fremont? That's a good question. Possibly, no. Yes, <laughs> We're into the first stages of, of signing up retailers. So. Okay, so the crypto clothesline will put this um, out publicly for you. And how much will yeah. we get for getting people? Yeah, what's our affiliate? <laughs> well, you, you'll, learn, you'll learn droplets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Have, have <laughs> okay, cool. Droplets, so. Even though crypto clothes land in the droplet. We're going to be loaded with fuel. So can you tell me about the tax implications? Because you mentioned that as an employer, I could pass these droplets onto my employees and they could use that. That would normally, like, using fuel, if you're self-employed or whatever, you can use it as tax deduction. Or an incentive. So how does that work in terms of taxation? And does Refueler issue me with something at the end of the financial year saying, Here's how much you've spent in droplets, and this is what your tax portion could be. Yep, so uh, tax-wise, it will uh, work the same as uh, if you're spending in cash. So you need but, to keep your receipts? No, but uh, everything you're purchasing on the uh, receiver, there's a report being created. Report. So, okay, so there so is a report. You will get uh, reports uh, monthly, and you get a download or email circulated. Okay, so, so that, that's, oh, that's all the other problem because... Oh, that's uh, fantastic. So a lot of companies, they've got different cards, like a shell card, a crypto card, different cards. They have to reconcile three or four uh, different statements to, to get that information. But with refueler, you can just get uh, one stop and you get everything, you know, like all, all your... Like a bank statement. Yeah. So as a user, I go into the app and I can say, I would like all my reports yep. from the last 12 months. Yep. Say here, ATO, enjoy yep. this. You mentioned What's Aldi. Are you working with Aldi at the moment, or is that a hope and a dream? No, yeah, so no, yeah. I'm working with Aldi, but Aldi, you are watching. Yeah, we, we're after you. <laughs> 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 so we do know Woolworths and Coles of their own. Aldi, you know, competing with those guys, and they don't have a server attachment. So, yeah, why not? Let's, let's partner up. Yeah. But yeah, really, just on the partner award stuff, we'd like to get a lot local as well, but obviously heaps of national stuff. And we want to make it so you're not spending out of your normal weekly budget. Excellent. So the places you normally shop, and they'll be giving you free fuel. So that's like yeah. really family friendly. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you're also open to the idea of dealing with, say, boutique merchants that are not the big guys. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So we'd like so to. Like our friend who's yeah. starting an organic produce store, you know, rah, 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 she could say, hey, I like what these guys are doing, I'm going to support them. Yep, that's it. And through the app, you can use your droplets or cash um, to actually donate a tree, a plant a tree, through our um, carbon neutral charitable funds partnership that we've got. Which is essential because you're dealing with fuel and you're that's like, right, how right. do we balance this shit? That's exactly right. So we're burning yeah. fuel and, and CO2 yeah. emissions, so let's plant some trees for the environment. That was the first yep. partnership we did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. So your sustainability is ticked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So awesome. we're being conscious about it all like, uh, we all, we all yeah. have kids and we want yeah. them to have a world to live in. Yeah. 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 Because after uh, Garrett Laporto's um, discussion and presentation this morning, I'm like, oh my God, it's so depressed. Yeah. <laughs> what are we going to do to save the world? Oh, what was I thinking when yeah, I thought it was great to have a baby? I'm, I've really made me start to feel um, irresponsible about being a parent just because I introduced another person into this world. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit heavy, yes. isn't it? Do you guys yeah. not think that way? No, I've not. Um, no, well, no. this is how I think. I did. I thought. Well, like, say no more. <laughs> I, I thought like that for a second, Davidi, but it was like we're actually you and I are really special. We're pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. And 
And so <laughs> she's on a roll. <laughs> it, it's like we need people like us to procreate <laughs> because there's a few disasters. That is true. You know what I mean? So don't feel bad that you've contributed human life that is going to change the world. Yeah, that's a sweet word. Because it was like JP's discussion, we can go utopia, we can go dystopia, and it just feels like it's such a fragile uh, precipice between falling into that complete space of... I think it's the unknown as well. We don't know when it's going to happen or how it's going to it's happen. It's the unknown, but it's the yeah. rate right <laughs> of the acceleration of the acceleration that's happening. Yeah. We're on to a whole new topic here. Yeah, yeah, but still, I'm really still, excited about, about families oh, and, and parents. Look, and this is re- this is totally very relevant totally to the podcast. Yeah. Relation. And I think you'd be happy to know we we have four women on the team as well. Oh, okay, what are their roles? So women, women in blockchain. So. Okay, okay, yeah. go. All right. So. One minute, can you list their names? We want to say hi to you, ladies. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and tell us what they do when they're going to be on the podcast. Actually, actually um, I can't actually mention some of their names for confidentiality at the moment. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, they don't want to be on. Yeah. Um, Facebook. Obviously. Yeah, but only because part time working and, and mm-hmm. other roles mm-hmm. and things. So yeah, yeah, well, oh, yeah. Right. We have Kerry sure. Mansell, who's um, actually based out of Mumbai. She's a senior analyst, and she's also writing a white paper. I think it's the only woman you, you, name, you, but you, you, at, you, at the moment. But at the moment, but we will be naming woman, him. We will be naming him. We've got a woman writing the technical white paper. We do. Well, because yes, we have a great communication. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. this was a discussion we had with the previous. We had this lady called Juliet Anarino. She has this business called reputationship.io. Were you guys there when I was speaking last night? Yes, yeah, at the panel, yeah. yeah. Course, so yeah, when yeah, we were yeah. speaking about the fact that there is an app that, you know, you can report anonymously sexual harassment. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's the brains behind that, and she got into the space because, oh, yeah, again, that's a word space. We're making, taking a mickey out of the fact we're in the space. We're in the space. Mm. Yeah. We're in the space. <laughs> right. We're trying not to say anything, it's so annoying, but anyway. <laughs> because that's how she got into the area yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> the void because, the void yes there were void. people were writing these super technical white papers that no one could understand and they made no sense and everyone was like boring so her job was to translate it and to make it into digestible language which made sense to people and was actually yeah really interesting so then out of that she she well, developed she's a, a lot of writer, you see. yeah she so writes she cabarets cabarets so, for Hollywood yeah. so it's really interesting yeah I think having women in industry is 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 crucial for it moving forward, and especially after your speech yesterday as well. Oh, yeah. So, I, yeah, I definitely, you definitely see how women embracing it would spread the word to families a lot quicker. It's probably a bit senseless to say, but you know, people would look at it as if, oh, well, she gets it, or why can't I get it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's not even sexist. We no, all yeah, not, mirror each yeah, other, but don't we? We I think it's just a, a thing, and you know, if my mum's into it, well, why don't you get into it? You know, yeah. that, that sort of thing. That's so, exactly yeah, right. And, yeah. and that's a really good point that we stop being ageist yep. or sexist. Or it doesn't mean that we're necessarily choosing to be that way. We go, oh, she wouldn't be into it. It's an unquestioned assumption. Yeah. I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but my mum, before she passed, had a mobile and she was texting me all day. She was in her 80s. <laughs> so I'm like, she's over this, you know? It's a cool thing when you can actually share this. And the other thing I was thinking about the whole role of women in the work that you're doing. I think it would be very good and advantageous, and that you know what I'm trying to say, <laughs> from a marketing perspective, is to get it into the hands and mouths of as many women as possible. Yeah, because yeah. you know, there's it's not. The budget. It's, there, it's there's, like, a, there's a budget. There's a budget. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, well, the, the yeah. budget is in the bill yeah, pays, but do you yeah. know what? They're often the ones filling the car. Yeah. Do you know what I really also, miss? Yeah. I really miss the days when you rocked up to the servo. Can you bring this back, please? Can you put this in the white paper? Yep. Yeah. You rock up to oh, the and someone boat. fills up your car. Someone comes out and fills up your car. Like, oh, oh, putting the kids man. out of the car. Like, I don't oh, bang my kids out of the car, just lock them in. No. <laughs> no. Oh. Yeah, anyway. Crack the windows and I mean, it's like a No, no, my kids are really, really chilled out. I, I lock them in because I don't want anyone to steal them while I'm paying them. No, they're not. Not because they can't get out. Yeah. No, 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 not at all. I mean, it's serious. I absolutely no robots in the future who will do that for you. Oh, well, they still do it in other countries. We're just yeah, like... Come to your house and fill up. Do you know, I used to live in Italy, and I went to fill up my car once, and I just got out, and this guy came out, and he went, Nick, you fuck, you know, what are you doing? And I went, what are you kind of getting? I'm, I'm filling the tank. And he goes, where are you from? I said, no shit. And I went, I'm from Australia? And he goes, because no Italian woman could ever fill her own car. <laughs> this is a little while back, and this was in a kind of posh Riviera part. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, really? I should stay in the car. Yeah, and, close, yeah. 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 and do it next time. <laughs> Final words, Stitch. What have you got to say? We are doing uh, 
do a really big thing uh, at the moment. Like uh, yeah. it's a real world problem, and uh, we see a lot of uh, a lot of people who could try uh, could use it, and um, it's just a matter of you know getting there and uh, people trying it. They find that you know that they're, they're making real savings. So uh, hopefully you guys will um, uh, would like to download our app and uh, use it from there. So we download the app, which is at refueler.com.au. And yeah, maybe we'll be ready in two weeks. So okay. then you can download it. Now. I'll throw the app store. I'll throw it. And can you quickly tell me if I, like the average family, say two kids, uh, three kids, whatever, two parents, that a two car family that refuels once a week at 80 bucks a pop, that's 160 bucks yeah. in the family budget, how much are they going to save roughly? So roughly $15 per car. So 30 bucks a week. Yeah, that would be so from 160 We don't have partner awards. Yeah, okay. So, so that's, if you're that's partner, you have partner awards, then it depends on how much you're shopping. If you're buying tickets through Flight Center, you might get a full time of me just for that purchase. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That'll aid you to drive to the airport. <laughs> and also, thirty dollars towards other cryptos. Absolutely. Yes. That's what you guys could do. You could do like the Acorn version, of it. like yeah. what you've saved with your on your fuel. Yeah, put it back we're going to put it here. Yeah, we're yeah. going to invest it into. Wow. Oh, that would be pretty good. Weigh your ideas, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Commission. <laughs> we told you that it would go far. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so well, when's well, the launch, well, and when are you going to invite us? And when's the party? <laughs> I like parties. Let's talk about the ghosts. And the Ouija? Yeah. Closing words? Closing words. Just wait for it to come out. We're not far from doing, running our trials in a real server. And soon after that, but just, just keep your eye out for us on the news and in the papers because we will be hitting them and we will be saving Super Showdowns a lot of money. That's like 30 bucks out of $160 spend a week. That's, that is a yeah, sizable chunk. It really is. It is, yeah, it is. It is big. It's lots of money. What they could do with the extra 30 bucks, actually, forget about putting it into crypto, just send it to our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Because why should these guys make all the money? <laughs> all right. yeah. We came here to get some sponsors, men. Yeah. Boy. I already yeah. told them that. <laughs> I, I, I already said, as soon as you guys start making Amy money, you... Us up about yeah, that. I've been, I've been, I have been hitting everybody up. Yeah, it's very proactive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't ask, so. ask them about shelf, hopefully you receive. Yeah. All right. Lovely cool. done, so Great. yeah, have a bit of support where we can. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very ladies. much. Appreciate Thanks so much for joining us. We're really bad at stopping and saying goodbye because yeah. we keep chatting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Refuel, I feel like it's a super practical app that doesn't exclude anyone because if you drive, you need this app. Everybody wants cheaper fuel, right? Do you know what's really interesting? I told my partner about this and he said, see, I told you fuel apps were worth it. Okay, thank you for just clarifying. The whole experience that you've put me through the past like three years, it's all worth it now because Refuel is here and they've solved a bit of a problem. It's called Someone Has Validated My Obsession with Three Cents Cheaper Fuel. <laughs> yeah. But he's pretty excited. We're really looking forward to using it. And I think it's going to save people a lot of money and a lot of time. Yeah. Do you want to briefly just step through exactly what the process is? Okay. So basically, when you want to fuel up, you go to their app and you can see a really cheap price. And when you see the cheap price, you buy it at that cheap price right there and then and then you've got it at that cheap price so that you're able to go when you're ready to refill when you want at that price that you loved like peer-to-peer -peer, you can send your tokens to your friends and family when you go to these stores that is where you get the fuel rebates you get the fuel rebates at those places not off the hang on can you tell me how that works they're going to be partnering with some grocery stores it feels like a really practical app. As I mentioned before, I don't think there's anyone, any families that wouldn't be able to benefit from this. And it's an Australian development, but it really could be applied anywhere around the world. So it's a pretty exciting idea. Well, every single person you talk to whinges about fuel. That means every single person has an interest in this. So I think they're onto a good thing. Yeah. I wonder what the applications are with electric cars and, uh, you know, the advent of new and cleaner technology or fueling around or energy around cars. Oh, I wonder about that too, but perhaps refueler could actually go into energy as well because really you have to refuel your car with something. Yeah. It might be 
electricity, it might be gas, it might be petrol, perhaps they could cover all of that, those things. That would be worth having their feedback on. Mm. Coming up next is our section, Ask the Girls. And in this section, we've put out posts in the various social media platforms asking people to tell us what their questions are to do with crypto and blockchain technology. So we did get a lot of questions. And for anyone who's not aware, we have a Telegram chat and you can find that by going to the show notes. So that is where we recommend you send us your questions. Even better if you can put that into an MP3 format and send it, then we can hear your name, where you're from, and perhaps why you're asking the question. But we do have a lot of questions coming up and a lot of them are quite technical and some of them are humanity-based. We had a great question from Nick and Nick is the host of the Decentralized podcast, which is awesome. So we've got a question from another podcaster today who's asking us something quite brilliant. His question is this, should we teach our kids about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? If so, where should people start? This is a pretty easy question for us because we also run crypto and kids and we're massive advocates for educating children. Abid is a teacher and we have kids and we love crypto. So obviously we're a little bit biased and we think absolutely kids are the upcoming generation. We need to educate them on decentralization, on digital currencies, how to manage their finances and all of these things. So I think absolutely we should educate children. This is what was so disappointing about a conversation I had last night with a lady and it was at this event called The Future of Money. And this particular lady is an expert in educating children in financial things. And it was fantastic. And somebody said to me, you've got to talk to her. She's going to love it. You could work together. So I went up to her and I talked about crypto and kids and stuff. I may as well have been banging my head on a wall made of jelly with concrete behind it. It was so frustrating, like the absolute zero wish to engage with me, probably because of the media persona behind cryptocurrency, you know, the feeling that cryptocurrency is, is a dodgy thing. However, to answer your question, Nick, I think the first place to start about teaching our kids about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, the very, very first place to start is A, do the research yourself so you start to get some kind of idea of what it's all about. Now, there's a lot of rabbit holes and they go really deep, so don't get too stressed out about that, but just do the basics. The other aspect is once you've developed a bit of a lexicon around it, a bit of a conversation, then just start talking to your kids at the table. That's what we do. We just sit there and talk about stuff and they start to bring the conversation. They start to ask you questions. In one of our interviews with Alex Tinsman of NEM, she said that her 13-year-old son made $10,000 with the bull market run in December because he was a gamer. He knew about cryptocurrencies. He talked about it with his parents. They had led and guided him through and he made a tidy sum from his pocket money. So I reckon that's the place to start. Your thoughts, Amy Rose? Uh, go to cryptoandkids.com. <laughs> Oh, yeah. There's so many resources there. We've held crypto and kids events. Yes, we're biased. Perfect question, Nick. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the plug. We didn't set that up in advance. Yeah, we actually didn't. <laughs> so you can go to crypto and kids. And yes, there are resources. Amy Rose has written a book called Bitcoin Together We Can Change the World. It is a really beautiful book. So we actually use that book as one of our base storytelling books within the Crypto and Kids event. But it is such an informative book and it looks at the history of money and it looks at the fact that, you know, once upon a time we traded seeds and then it turned into silver and gold and then you had money develop and then plastic and now crypto. So that's the kind of information that probably would have been more useful in the future of money event last night. Oh, there I go again. However... <laughs> <laughs> And also Bitcoin Girl has written a book together with another guy and it's called Billy Bitcoin, I think. So we're giving another plug to another amazing woman in the space. Bitcoin Girl is also known as Naomi Brockwell. She is an Australian girl living in New York. She's got a YouTube channel and she talks a lot of tech with a lot of techies. And she's emceeing a lot of really huge events across the world, especially across the US. And she also has a book called Bitcoin Billy that would be worth having a look at too, parents. Nice. So there's a few women out there who are educating kids. Yeah. I'm going to put a link to all of this into the show notes so you can basically click a link and hopefully find what you need super quick. 
It's been great to have this chat. Thank you for the wonderful questions, Nick. Keep them rolling in because yours have got a real humanitarian focus. And, you know, we're not very good at questions like N-Chain versus BSV. All I see there is the BS. You see, we've got to do a lot of work to research and to be able to sound like we understand the answers to those questions. But, Nick, your questions rock. Thank you. Have a good day, Beauty. See you later. See you, darling. Bye. Hi, you've called a beauty. And Amy Rose. At Crypto. Clothesline. Leave a message after the beep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Ready? Now, I don't follow yous, yous girls, and I don't follow, you know, crypto and stuff in the news. I just don't follow yous and I don't follow the news except for the important stuff on the TV at night. However, I did see in a Facebook group that there were mostly blokes talking about crypto. I think you better get your, your deal straight, ladies. This is not an arena for the ladies. This is a bloke's space and you need to get with the, you know, you get need to get with it. I can't think of my words just off the top of my head. But I do know that ladies are not supposed to be talking about finances. They're not supposed to be talking about you know, sciencey things and futuristic things. I mean, keep that for Dr. Spock and Dr. Who. Just go and disappear inside your telephone box, ladies. It is unrealistic what you're trying to achieve here. Crypto Close Line.